Hi, I'm Theodore Pappas, and I hope you'll like my new book, Combing Through the White House. This book looks at history through a very unusual lens, as revealed in the book's subtitle, Hair and its Shocking Impact on the Politics, Private Lives, and Legacies of the Presidents. This approach to history likely sounds outrageous, but when you think of such things as the short-haired flappers of the 1920s, the shaved heads of Holocaust victims, the long-haired hippies of the 1960s, the shaved pates of skinheads and Me Too activists, and the many court cases involving our hair and facial hair. When you think of all this, you begin to see how hair is seldom simply hair, and that it's actually a wonderful prism for gleaning insights into social, cultural, and historical events, including those tied to the American presidency. Chapter one looks at Abraham Lincoln and the special role that hair and body image played in both his life and death. Chapter two looks at the pastime of collecting hair, of wanting a physical, tangible keepsake of someone we love and deeply miss. It's telling that the last thing Robert and Jackie Kennedy did when viewing the slain president was tied to hair. Robert put a snippet of his own hair into the president's coffin. Well, Jackie, she did the opposite. She cut locks from the president's head to take with her as a special keepsake. Chapter three looks at how hair has even influenced the politics and foreign policy of the country and affected in very touching ways several presidential marriages. Chapter four showcases Jack and Jackie Kennedy and the special way that hair impacted their time in the White House, their vast image making, and even the president's extramarital affairs. Chapter five relates the parallel tragedies of Franklin Pierce and George H.W. Bush, showing how the death of a child affected their presidencies, the role hair played in these tragedies, as well as the relentless body shaming that First Lady Barbara Bush experienced as a result of this emotional event. And the final chapter, it looks at the intersection of hair, science, and medicine, and how technology is rewriting history, impacting impeachments, solving paternity matters tied to presidential sex scandals, and showing how several presidents really died. So if any of these topics sound interesting, or if you're simply wondering why we haven't had a president with uh, facial hair for more than a century, then I hope you'll read my book. This book personalizes the past in a fun, engaging way through a basic element of life that we all can relate to. And given the spate of highly partisan books about the White House that will doubtless be released over the next year, this book should be a welcome respite, for it's a book for readers of all political stripes. I hope you enjoy it.